Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back again to another episode of Outside the Box. I got my friend J.C. Riley here with me today. He is the uh, the head, the founder of Bison Aquatic Club here in Oklahoma. They do everything from teaching kids how to swim to teaching collegiate level to compete at a national level. And they got five locations all over the state. And we're just going to hang out and talk a little bit and just hear about it because he's investing in the youth. He's investing in the next generation. I met him because of a club that we belong to on Thursday mornings. And I've just gotten to know JC. And uh, without further ado, I want to introduce to you, Mr. JC Riley. Hey, what's up, Roger? What's going on, man? <clears throat> so tell me about JC. Uh, man, um, <laughs> you know, I guess, uh, you know, we visited a minute ago and we were talking about swimming and man, I'm just, I guess I'm a lucky dad who got involved in their kids stuff. Um, and it worked, worked out to be, uh, uh, a great thing. Um, yeah, it was my oldest daughter who's married now, uh, Haley, she was, uh, got into swimming. It was not something that I did. I always tell people that I look like I'm a, getting attacked by a shark in the water. That's fair. Um, but <laughs> she got into swimming, and when she was real young, like her age group could do a couple days a week, uh, she had an appetite for it, wanted to go every day to the pool, but not to play. She wanted to work out, and I didn't know what to do with her. So, uh, but what with what uh, my career was at the time, I did a research was my deal. So I started doing research and uh, doing some things to help her. And, and um, we were enjoying that time as father, daughter and coach athlete. And uh, I just through a series of circumstances started volunteering for um, Oklahoma Baptist University um, and their uh, coach at the time. Um, he's a, well, he's a swim legend. We were blessed to have him in this area and spent some time with him and learning and ended up my uh, unattaching my daughter from her team and she and I were just going to make a go of it ourselves and uh, we were learning together and folks started asking if they could swim with us and so you know soon we had five kids and uh, launched a club we had uh, did our first swim meet in May of 2013 with five kids and um, it kind of word got out and by the end of the summer we had 40 something kids and I was there at the pool <laughs> um, it was just supposed to be an, a kind of an accident how it happened but I was at the pool one morning with Sam my mentor that was uh, the coach there at OBU and um, telling him man I'm enjoying this when when I retire this is what I'm going to do I'm enjoying spending my time doing this and uh, he said well uh, JC if you can rearrange your life a little bit and figure out how to live on what you could make coaching. Isn't that the same as being retired now? And I thought, that sure beats chase, chasing that for the next 20 years, right? So um, my wife was really enjoying it too and getting to know the families and the kids and helping along. And we had some discussions and about that conversation and we decided to take the leap. So we, we did, we jumped in with both feet um, with the club and um, rearranged some things and it's been nothing but a blessing. So now we have um, around 100 kids at our location in Edmond, Oklahoma. We train at the Edmond Schools Aquatic Center. They're okay. uh, attached to the Mitch Park YMCA. And then uh, now we have groups in Duncan, Lawton, Altus, and Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. And there's 20 to 30 swimmers at each of those locations kind of depending on the time of the year that's awesome yeah. man so it's it's been really cool i get to you know I'm that guy that gets to go to every one of his kids practices and swim meets and all that stuff so it's been as a dad a real blessing too that's fantastic man so you were able to take and i know you still kind of do some side stuff you know with your brother mm -hmm. uh rusty but uh so is this transition able to actually support you and your family uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I do with, uh, I really enjoy doing um, like brickwork and, and things like that with my hands. Uh, kind of grew up around that. Mm -hmm. And so even uh, when I was uh, doing uh, marketing consulting before, I would still 
occasionally uh, help him with a project and stuff like that. And so now, uh, one or two mornings a week, I, I will uh, do a little brick project or help my okay. brother with something that he's doing or something like that. I uh, enjoy it, and I enjoy getting to hang with him. So. Very cool. Well, and you guys have a pretty cool story. Just, I mean, you, you guys didn't grow up together. Like, you yeah. kind of found each other, like, way back, or, yeah. you, know, you know, just a little while ago, right? Yeah, that's a, it's a crazy deal. Um, we always tell people we're Spose brothers. Spose, same, okay, do explain. Yeah, same piece of stuff, Dad, okay. right? Okay, um, So <laughs> we, He's 14 years older than me, um, and we each grew up with our moms. We had great mothers, um, but uh, we kind of, since he was so much older than me and grew up with his mother, I grew up with mine, different city, you know, um, we, I knew he exists, he knew I existed. <laughs> But we never really saw each other. Mm -hmm. um, I and I had taken taken a job uh, one at one point in two thousand seven. Okay, and uh, my brother Rusty worked there. Uh, so I got there. We <laughs> we got to know each other, and we realized, oh my goodness, we are a lot alike. You know, he's a taller, uglier version of me, <laughs> and. Um, so we but he rose the heck of a pig. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, just really had a good time. We started going to lunch together and hanging out. And now we I talked to him on the phone up until I pulled in the parking lot. Uh, here we talk to each other every day. If we don't see each other, you know, we have a a, a hiking trip that we do every year and go to the mountains. Um, the two of us and and uh, it's pretty special. Uh, relationship to be able to have and yeah. it's not like we've only known each other for you know 14 years or whatever it feels like we we grew up together so that's awesome yeah. Man, I love it you know having uh, I got two brothers and a sister and man it's so important to try to spend time with them and I almost lost my brother a year ago um, he ended up having a quadruple bypass surgery and like just a bunch of stuff so it's very important for those of you that are out there, if you got a strange family or dad, mom, whatever, like get get that stuff straight for real. Yeah, absolutely. because I mean, it's blood. <clears throat> yeah, you never know. I, you know, I grew up on my mom's side. I have uh, two sisters and a brother, and we're really close too. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just crazy how much of my personality was exactly like the brother. Like that Rusty, I never knew. <laughs> Even down to you know, you hear little little things like. Two in the hand, or one of the hands worth two in the bush, or whatever. You hear those little sayings, and some of them you pick up and you use on right, that, right. Well, I picked up those same ones and was using in my life into my thirties as he had been using, and we didn't know each other. But those are like our brains picked up over time. Those things that everybody hears, those, and they became my favorites. The same ones that were his favorites, and and yeah. little things like that. That I was, that was weird. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I thought was really cool. Uh, so we just went on a fishing trip back in, what, April, I mm -hmm. guess. So you guys went and hammock camped. Yeah. And you guys have just, like, created this system now to where it's just like, <laughs> boom, in and out. So I love that because, you know, they didn't hang out with us. They did hang out with us a little bit. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, y'all are such a tight-knit, you know, yep. set of brothers, man. I love that. And you guys love spending time together. Yeah. Actually, uh, 10 weeks from today, we're heading to the mountains and we'll go. Uh, up on, uh, well, I say 10 weeks from tomorrow, I guess. We'll uh, go up and on Saturday morning uh, head up the mountain and we won't see anybody till the next Friday or Saturday when we come back down. And uh, we'll hang hammocks and, uh, yeah, sleep in the mountains. That'll be good. We'll fish and uh, we've, we've gotten it, yeah, down to a system so it's not very much stuff to have to carry, very much weight. Yeah. And it can be put up and down quick in case it's bad weather. So, <laughs> right. Well, yeah. and you guys are doing, so how many miles do y'all hike? Really? Um, if we actually, the trip we're doing this year, we're kind of looking at doing a little different roundabout way. Um, it's normally only about eight miles or something like that. It's just pretty rough terrain up. Okay. And then we spend a few days up there, and then it's a rough hike, rough trek down. So we're not hiking the whole time. Okay. So it's a get your spot. Yeah, it's an adventure to get up to that okay. little alpine lake that we're at, and then uh, it's an adventure uh, getting down. But, That's cool. Yeah. So 
you know, one thing I love, so I'm, I'm going through this series called uh, 33, and it's uh, called Authentic Manhood. It's a Bible okay. study. And I did the original one 15 years ago. I was up in the morning, 5 a.m., to go meet with a bunch of old dudes that were in their 60s yeah. and older at a church. And it was interesting because of the the quality of men and the quality of what their life experiences have been. And one of the things that is not common anymore is that rugged man stuff. Like whenever I was in yeah. Boy Scouts, we had this thing called Mountain Man in mm-hmm. Mena, Arkansas, Camp Pioneer. And you had to be at least 16 to be able to go to that one. So I was really upset for a couple of years because I couldn't go. And my brother and my best friend went. And But, you know, you shoot muskets. You know, you make your own lead balls. You're yeah. throwing tomahawks. You're creating and making things like as if you had to survive. Yeah. And so I think about with you guys with that. It's like, man, that's so cool. And there's a lot of men that I think have that heart of adventure in their life but they don't have an opportunity to go and do those things. Yeah, um, it's it, it's interesting. We went the first year. Actually, my Rusty had to talk me into it. He had gone on the trip a long time ago, and him being 14 years older than me, and of course I've already got a lot of gray um, and myself, um, we're at that point where myself, if I was to twist my ankle or knee real bad or something like that, it may change my ability to go on a physically challenging trip or, mm-hmm. you know, conquer climbing up cliff or whatever um, with a pack and all that. Um, it, Cause I'm not going to heal. Like if it happened if, when I was 20 or 30 mm-hmm. um, and him being 14 years older than me, he was, he had started to have, um, he wanted to go on this trip to this place again. And he thought, I need to do it sometime in the next couple, in the next few years, next maybe one, two, maybe twenty, but I don't know, depending on when it is. Um, and so he hit me up about it, and I was like, oh, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really into that, you know. And he's he's no, no, you got to come. So he really he talked me into it. He pulled the um, little bit of the guilt card. He's you know I I really want to go up here one more time because it's so special and such an experience. And there's nothing I would want more than to experience it with my brother that I found. And, and I'm like, oh, dang gosh, it. Rusty. So I, I pull those heartstrings. Come on. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. <laughs> so I, we go. The best and thing dude, ever, right? It was the best thing ever. It was a challenge. You know, I got up there and I was looking and I had, I'd never been to the mountains like that and realized just how big and majestic they were. Dude, I was just. Anybody who doesn't believe God exists has not seen the ground untouched. Mm. Um, there's a reason why every ancient civilization believed in a God of some sort, because there's no way you can see things how they were before man has screwed them up mm. and not know that it was designed. That's by awesome. The most awesome. And I just, so we, decided that my brother was right we never know even at my age when and him being older so um every year as long as we physically can we will go up that mountain and so so we that's what we've what we've done and fell in love with it and and now we it's to prolong it from the day we got down it was um all year trying to get in shape and stay in shape for that trip so that we because it's a tough one. It's and grueling, I'm sure. Yeah. So it's all year try to get in. So it's also been the best thing for my health, too. Because <laughs> I want to make sure I can prolong my ability to go on that trip. You know, I ain't going to lie. So we went out to Rusty's uh, uh, Pig Roast. Yeah. You know, out at, uh, at Tin Killer. And it's like, I got a picture to show you. It's a picture of you. <laughs> yeah, we got like Krispy Kreme oh, donuts. Putting the sign up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. So... Look way different. So, and it's good that that's a motivation. Was about fifty pounds heavier, and I had zero muscle on me. So, right, yeah. So, and that and that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I Man, I started working out beginning of twenty twenty, mm-hmm. um, and I started doing that because my family has a long history of heart disease, overweight. My dad died before he was sixty five. Men in my family die before they hit 70. So I decided, you know, I got two boys. 
my boys have never got to experience their grandparents like on my side well my mom but a grandfather i never experienced my grandparents either one of them like my grandfather and it's like you know i'm i'm done like with that being my family's legacy because we talked about legacy and what is it currently why is it that what can it be what do you want it to be you know a lot of questions that people don't ask mm -hmm. and that was the decision i made it's like i am going to be fully healthy you know whether if i get my goal weight or not it doesn't matter but as long as i'm healthy and you know i'm fit doesn't matter mm -hmm. but that family curse is done and then in september of 2020 my older brother is only 41 had a quadruple bypass surgery and now his kidneys don't work and just like all these things and it breaks my heart to see him because he's still not recovering well but i chose to be that leader in my family to say you know we're done with this and you guys get to do that too you know I mean, with the yeah. way you look now and the way that you guys take that trip you don't know who's watching you you know yeah so that's really encouraging to to see it's it's cool and it's cool to be able to do stuff with my kids and yeah you know and know that i that i will with my grandkids and stuff i'm not going to be like i don't want to i look forward to the opportunity to be you know grandparents when i was a kid were like you're just waiting on them to die right, right. <laughs> and now it's not like that man my my kid's granddad goes out and does stuff with them and it adventures and he does more with my kids than i did you know he took them on adventures and stuff it was cool and i want to be that that kind of granddad so the way the way he is so. heck yeah absolutely well man so tell me a little bit more about um about usa swim club like you guys get to yeah. i mean so that's i mean that's really cool to me that you guys take kids from every level but tell me what it looks like whenever you get kids that are hitting the collegiate level and yeah what does that experience look okay like? yeah and and uh, in every community, like as far as getting the kids started, in every community we're in, it looks a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, like in Edmond, um, normally by the time the kids come to us, they know the four strokes. Um, Which are? The butterfly, breaststroke, backstroke, and uh, freestyle. Um, and uh, then we take them from there. And even in some of the communities, you know, we will do lessons or hook them up with a coach and get them up to that mm -hmm. that spot. Um here, there's a an organization that we partner with, Oklahoma Swim Academy, okay. and then uh, a couple of our um, coaches that do one on ones to get kids ready for for team. But so once they're on team, you know they've got a couple of different levels that they progress through, and um, what USA Swimming calls age group swimming, which is really like that under 13 uh, level. Um, then uh, for that, we've got some different levels of progression that um, we do um, and the kids kind of progress by um, where they're at either in learning the strokes or in the rules to to whatever um, and then our high schoolers are ninth grade and above is uh, together kind of for them whether they're a beginner or not we get them in the same group because um, we expect them if they're here you're here to learn to race and and um, you expect you to be mature enough to be able to, we're going to give you something to work on and you something to work on and you something to work on during this. And you can uh, say at it. So there's always someone to challenge you with. But the beginner kid that's in high school doesn't get stuck with the little kids. Gotcha. You know? uh, we've got a young man that graduated last year. He went to Yukon High School. He started swimming as a freshman in high school. And by the time he finished, he had a USA Swimming Sectionals cut. Uh, before he graduated high school, he graduated with the USA Swimming Sectionals cut and everything but the 100 and 200 breasts, and the school record at um, UConn High School and everything except for, I believe, the 100 breast. I don't think he had that one, but every other event. Um, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's a kid that, you know, he starts as a freshman. You stick him with the little kids, he's probably just going to end up quitting in a few weeks, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, so our high schoolers stay together. Under there, we they progress by their ability, and then we've got a group we call juniors, um, and that's those kids that um, they've got down the basics and they can swim a clean race and with the fundamentals correct, and now they're ready to start learning race strategy and stuff. But they're um, uh, not in high school yet. You know, mm -hmm. they're the twelve-year-old girl that goes twenty-five and the fifty-three and that type of stuff. You know, if we're some of our high school girls. That's a, a decent time for them, right? Okay. Um, so, 
uh, those kids, well, she doesn't, just because she's as fast as the 17, 18 year old girl doesn't mean she needs to have the convert, be in the conversations with the 17, 18 year old girls every night, right? Fair enough. So we have a group for them that's at juniors. Those are those kids that aren't in high school, but it's like the top level of age group. They really kind of get to train like high schoolers. They're just in group with other advanced kids, kids their age. age. Okay. Yeah. It's like AP classes for junior yep. high. <laughs> yeah, and then we have uh, at each of our smaller locations, we have kind of a miniature version of that. So there may be two kids in or three kids in that level or that group instead of 20 or, or whatever. But it really kind of follows that same idea and structure as far as ex- expectation and the growth of the, of the athlete. Cool. So it, so, gives, so it gives a comfort level for people. Yeah, yeah. I remember whenever I was, uh, so my dad was a wrestler in high school and college and He's like, you need to go to this wrestling camp. It's like, I've never wrestled in my life. Like, I played hockey and tennis. Yeah. And I started golfing at like 15. And I went and got my butt kicked by a kid that was half my size. <laughs> like that. I'm like, I'm out. I'm good. Not my place to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so to have, so, and the reason why I never pursued it is because, like, I was thrown into, like, the lion's den. Versus what you're talking about, like, hey, this is, we know where you, we're going to figure out where you are. Mm-hmm. We're going to put you in the right space so that you're able to progress. So that's yeah. fantastic. And it, one of the cool things about this sport is, um, you, you know, with high school, you've got limited numbers of people you can put in an event and stuff. But with most USA swimming meets, the athletes have limits for their health um, of how many events they can swim in a day or in a, in a session and stuff. But as far as a team, for most most of the time, there's not a limit of, say, how many people I can put in the 200 breaststroke or, or the 200 free or whatever. Um, I can, if I've got 40 kids that can swim it, I can put 40 of them in it. You know? Whereas okay. like with school swimming, you're worried about team score. And so that's much more strict. You know, four kids, four athletes in an event, each athlete can only swim so many individuals and so many relays. With USA Swimming, it's as many like I can't remember the last time I looked at the team score to a USA swimming meet because uh, it's always just the biggest team there wins okay they score them really deep and there's not limits to how many kids you can put in throw in okay yeah so it's okay. just the biggest kid, team wins so it's not a big deal they're advancing off of their time individually qualifying for different meets so okay that, yeah so that's kind of the more the focus with USA swimming Okay. Uh, in in that can can you guys so do you guys take people to the level of Olympic? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a swim club out of Norman that has uh, a couple of kids that uh, swim for them and Norman North uh, High School. Same coach, as a matter of fact, um, and they swim swim uh, one swim in the first wave of Olympic trials last weekend, and then another young man is going to swim. Aiden Hayes will swim this. Uh, next wave coming up. That's right. Come on, so, go Oklahoma. Yeah, they, wow, come on. So that that was uh, cool. To and they're um, good athletes and and good kids, and it was cool to see them have success like that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. that's really cool. I learned uh, uh, my best friend Eric. His daughter is my daughter's turning ten, so she's like eight or eight or nine, and mm-hmm. she's like already very advanced. Like she goes to gym like gymnastics gym eight hours a day and then she does school like in between <laughs> like <laughs> her being on the mat yeah um and she's just advancing i mean like crazy so it's gonna be really cool because i told him like all right well where you are right now like we think you'll probably end up going to the olympics so your dad and i are coming <laughs> just yeah. so you know just i mean they do meets all over. i mean they do midwest they do yeah oklahoma texas louisiana whatever it is and she takes overall no matter where she goes if that's not cool. first, she's second. That's cool. Yeah, in her level. It's like, man, it's fantastic. Yeah. And You know, it's neat when you have a kid like that. One of the cool things about swimming is with USA, uh, there's a spot for every kid. So, like, the kid that's just not athletic, right? I mean, there's some of us like that, uh, yeah. you know, um, that they can still improve 
themselves. Um, they can still learn all the things that you learn. They can still get com- competitive experience. Like we're in some sports, if you're not one of the top kids, you just don't. Have, you can practice with the team and be a part of the team and show up and work just as hard and show up and cheer all your teammates on uh, because you're never getting in the game. You know, the only time you see it is the last 30 seconds if we're really killing them or they're really killing us. Right. There's a lot of those sports. And with swimming, uh, everybody gets to swim. You know, your first swim meet, That's you're awesome, listed dude. as a no time that. and you're seated with all other kids that have never swum that event. And then after you have a time in the USA database, every swim meet, you're seated with the eight kids that are around your time. So, oh, or the cool. six kids, depending on how many lanes. So, uh, like they'll swim all the 12 and unders at one session of a meet. So, regardless if you're seven, eight, nine, 12, if you swim this time, you may be in the same heat together. And then they, they break you out for scoring, um, you know, for your awards, like That's first, great. second, whatever, yeah. by age group. But when you go out there to compete, you're not just, if you're new, you're not getting just slaughtered by people that have been doing it for four years. And if you're advanced, you can, you're can you swimming with a little older kids, you know? Right. Because you're a little faster kids. So that works out well. That's really There's good. a that's place awesome. for everybody. Now, as a coach, that's kind of sucks because you don't have that leverage of when it comes to toughness. Or <laughs> right. uh, I remember baseball, every year you'd go through that part of the season where it felt like your arm was going to fall off. You know, you're taking ground or you're taking infield practice and you're just praying, God, please don't let him hit it to me. Because not because you didn't want to mess up feeling it, because you did not want to have to throw it from third base to first base, right? <laughs> right. And you're like, I don't, you, you want to field the ball and toss it to the shortstop, right? Take, right. take care of this for me. Right. So, um, <laughs> it, but you, I was not about to take a day off and say my arm hurt right. because uh, my buddy's little brother, Ty, was a freshman when I was a senior. And if I let him play one game, it may be my last game, right? Right. Yeah, I knew he w- he was wanting that spot and he was good enough to challenge me for it. And that made me have to be tough where they're like, oh, I've got a hair ache. You know, I, I can't do it. My hair hurts today or whatever. So I'm just... <laughs> I'm just gonna take this my hair uh, this off. Well, I always told my mom that sometimes, like after I wear hats for so long, it's like my hair is like it's not your hair. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> that's awesome. So that's cool. But so then that, you've that, got that those got you. some that are, um, you know, they're dialed in. That's fun to help those athletes try to grow. But then you've got those ones that uh, they want it. They're dialed in, um, and as a coach, you get to be a part of some pretty cool experiences. And Mm -hmm. um, one that I had reflected on a little bit lately was there's a young lady that swam with us for several years and uh, she's a freshman now at Edmond North High School. Okay. And she um, has been talking about a USA swimming sectionals level cut since before she really was old enough to even know, I think, and understand what it was, right? And it's a, it's a, a higher level meet that you can that you can qualify for, and it's a special special accomplishment. Um, and when the kids get that, we normally we have silver caps with our logo, and it's a big deal about silver cap. Mm-hmm. And um, when you get a sectionals cup, you get a black cap that says Bison Elite Swim Team, you know, nice. and, and that type of deal. So they, they're they, it's a kind of exciting for them. And uh, she had wanted that sectionals cup before she even had any business messing with it, and. But she's kept that goal and worked like it for several years. I mean, she. We always tell our kids, if you you got to be a champion before you're a champion, if you want to be a champion. And she's done that. She's trained like she expected that mm. long before um, it was supposed to happen. She didn't wait till I'm older and start doing it or whatever. I'm gonna write that down. And <laughs> keep going. That's a, that's a um, and yeah, every team or group, I guess, whatever has their little mantras, and that's that's one of them that we we say a lot. This uh, last short course season um, and during the high school season, they kind of run simultaneously. Uh, you know, early in the season, we had a rough meet in Kansas. And we um, it's funny, we were talking the other day about how that season started off in tears. And she says, well, I had already dealt with it and handled myself and I decided I was okay I was going to make it and then you walked over and started talking to me and I lost it and started bawling <laughs> she said it was your fault that I, I started crying but um, we you know it was, a, it was a rough start to the season she works hard she gives her heart to everything right she's we've got a lot of those kids but this is just one particular example 
And then um, last meet of the season, they're at high school state championship, um, one of her, I guess one of the last meets of the season. Um, she is swimming in state finals and she, uh, that meet, they can have the opportunity for, to have sanctioned swims uh, for USA Swimming and because they have it officiated by USA Swimming officials and such. And so she, um, she gets her USA Swimming sectionals time, right? And this girl's been working on it hard and she's been real close for the last couple of years. And, um, you know, she shows up in the morning. She, I mean, it's just the, the whole thing. Um, and the scoreboard is up behind me and, um, she, you caught that moment where she hits the wall. She's exhausted because this was with the time where she actually went over that red line, you know, and, and that little bit that it took and hit the wall. She's at exhaustion and she kind of gathers herself a little bit, turns and looks at the scoreboard. And there's that instant where she realizes it and that she got the time that she needed. Like she turned to see and over and over and over for two years, she's turned and looked even when she thought it was enough and it was a great swim. It wasn't there. And this time she turned with probably in a little bit of her mind that hope, but that expectation of disappointment. And she saw it and she was looking right over my head and I got a chance to be a part of knowing how much and what that little girl has put into it. And that instant that she realized it and it was it was like you were watching little carbonation bubbles just fill her body and go, you know, and you just the elation. And, and it's, it's, it was a pretty cool moment. And those are the times that it's like a drug, man. You, as a coach, you chase it. You're like, I want to, oh, I got to help someone see that again. I want to yeah. that moment again. <laughs> and adrenaline. I'm too old to drug to do it now, so I've got to use one of you guys to do it so yeah. I can see you at that moment, you know. So yeah, it's oh, cool. Uh, so that's the, that's the type of thing you get to be a part of, and that's why I was like, yeah, this is not screw when I retired. This is what I'm gonna do now. Yeah, that's awesome. So man, how powerful. Yeah, it's cool. And we, you know, because uh, we do a lot of work with high schools, and um, we stop in and help them. A couple of my uh, assistant coaches and site coaches um, are coaches at high schools. Mm-hmm. We've had the opportunity to help launch some different high school programs and add to the high school um, scene um, to help some train and increase their their level and their rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it, it's been. Uh, pretty cool to be a partnered in that way. Um, we've been able to raise some funds to put on a, a senior meet for a, the schools that don't have a home pool. Mm-hmm. They don't get to host home meets, so they don't get like senior night. Um, mm-hmm. And so we host uh, the Metro Senior Classic, and all the swim teams are invited that don't have a home pool. And we walk their, them out with mom and dad and introduce them and you know give them a little That's gift so and whatever. Cool. So. Uh, we try to partner with the high schools in that way, and and that also helps us identify those kids that they'll be um, good teammates. They're hard workers, and they have some ability to maybe make it to the next level. and And uh, and swimming would mean something for them. Maybe it's just giving them the motivation to keep their grades up, and so that they can go to college and have that option. Option, um, and uh, but maybe can't afford to swim year round. Mm-hmm. Um, it helped being a part of um, helping in those high schools helps us identify who those people are so that then um, one of the things I spend a lot of my time doing is uh, fundraising for scholarships um, that both that high school meet that we put on and then scholarships for kids that, that can't afford to right, um, right. so that we can get them in the water and uh, provide the op- opportunity for them. That's um, awesome. So what does that look like for uh, for raising funds to do that? So per kid, what does that cost to have a full ride scholarship? Yeah, a, a full scholarship, and it's a little different based on the location. And right. a lot of that has to do with water costs. Some of our um, rural uh, locations, the facilities that we're in, the communities have really helped us uh, keep the cost down by working with us for lane rental. Um, you know, in the metro area, there's just not much water and everybody wanting it. So you're paying full retail price for it. So it's a little more for those kids. Um, on average, um, I'd say uh, to do some swim meets as well and be able to have a, a, a suit 
um, train for a year and do the swim meets that they they need to do mm-hmm. you're looking at probably about two thousand dollars a kid okay yeah right on so for and that'd be for a full year a full kid to take care of everything and that ain't bad yeah that's not and you know a lot of times sometimes uh we'll have kids that are um and most of our kids are on some sort of partial scholarship or something like that because um, we also host fundraisers and stuff like that that allow them to help towards uh, earning money for their own scholarship. Very cool. Way. So I love they can that. raise the funds to swim. Um, and being involved in the school also, um, you know, those kids, uh, it some it helps us, of course, recruit and find kids for the club. But one of the nice things is once they come to the club, um, they're no longer at school event. And um, so we can share about Christ um, and we make a complete uh, point of that, you know, Full investment. Uh, the, you know, for instance, what we just talked about, about you've got to be a champion before you're a champion. If you want to be a champion, um, that, that's something that our kids know very well. And they've heard that related to King David. And when he uh, fought Goliath, um, mm-hmm. he told Saul, um, you know, hey, I'm the one that I can go beat him. And Saul says, no, you can't. You know, he knows him as the guy that's been playing the harp for him and soothing him, right? And as a shepherd boy who comes and does that. So he's like, this guy's been a warrior since his youth. His whole family's warriors. His brother's warriors. He's um, huge. Mm-hmm. And um, you're a, a boy, a shepherd boy. And David says, well, wait a minute. Um I may be just a shepherd boy, but while I was out watching my father's sheep and a lion or a bear came and took one of the sheep, he didn't say I tried to shoo it away or I made sure it just got one or I protected it from the sheep. He said one came and got it and I chased it down, took the lamb from its mouth, struck it in the head and killed it. I mean, come on. So he was, he knew he'd been anointed to be king, but he didn't take the entitled mentality of God's told me he's going to set this up. So I'll be patient and wait my time. No, he started preparing and he started doing it, warrior king stuff yeah. before he had to be a warrior king. So he started, he became a champion. He was going to be a champion before he was the champion so that he could be a good champion, you know? Dude. And so that, ah, that's it. the attitude we, we've got to take about it. And we... You know, we can share those truths in, in a lot of ways and how it um, last night, Thursday nights, we do team devotional. We stop early and last night, you know, we um, there's a lot going on around. It's like, um, I, can I speak pretty, pretty freely right here? Absolutely. Um, really. You know, I, I went into Starbucks the other day. And I thought I went to a Care Bears birthday party, right? Yep. It's, I uh, <laughs> yep. So, yep. Um, and uh, so one of the things that, you know, I think it's getting thrown in our kids' faces a, a lot is the feeling like it, we have to be proud of everybody, whether we agree with them or, or not or whatever. Not just um, we can accept someone and we can afford them full rights and treat them the same as us, but I've got to all of a sudden, some people I've got to be a proud of them or proud of their life. or what, First off, I don't know what they've necessarily accomplished, but... Uh, you know, I. but then again, we're in a ribbon for everybody's society, so we can all be proud, right? Um, but anyways, Somebody so mention of a, 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 what is this participation trophy? And I sent him a <laughs> meme about somebody like smashing a, <laughs> yeah. we don't do so, that here. <laughs> well, one of the things that we talked about was, uh, and I'm, this, I'll probably express what I'm trying to talk about, um, uh, easier through this. Uh, yeah. but in John chapter eight, um, Jesus, um, or the religious figures are carrying, dragging this woman out there to stone her, this adulterous woman, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And Jesus is like, yo, what's going on, right? Him and his disciples. And um, they they say, hey, you know, she's an adulteress. We caught her in the act. Law of Moses says that we can stone her. What do you got to say about that? And, of course, they're just trying to get him something like they're treating him like a politician in the press. They're trying to get him to say something so they can construe it around. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he starts writing in the dirt. And there's different scholars that have said that made, you know, and they they put together stuff that, you know, that 
there's smart guys that read a lot more than I do. But I've heard, you know, some people, they uh, suspect that he was starting to write out different types of sin that people in the crowd had, uh, he knew had been involved in, right? And he stands back up and says, um, okay, he but let the one who has no sin or is not sin throw the first stone. And he writes down, starts writing again. And one by one, from the oldest one, who was the wisest and thought about it for a second, to the youngest, who's the young buck full of vinegar, right? And he's going to go at it. And he's he's mad. And then through that example of the elders, wait a minute, he, he steps away. And um, Jesus looks at her and he, he asks where her accusers are. She says that they'd left. And he says, I've forgiven you. And um, then he turned to her and he go said, and go and, and sin no more, more, right? So... Here's the deal, and, and in John chapter eight, it teaches us a lot how to be about different things. The, the way you talk about be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. How did he handle not what happens if you meet a prostitute? It's how do you handle in a situation like this, right? So here was somebody who was involved in a lifestyle that the religious figures thought was right or wrong. Um, and so this is, you know, whether you believe prostitution's right or wrong or whatever is regardless of the thing it's what right. what they thought was right or wrong how they were going to treat her mm -hmm. was let's look at the the punishment deserved um and dish it out to the fullest extent and we're going to punish you for not living up to what we think are the standard is right um, right and what jesus said was no 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 i'm gonna the I don't think you're living up to the standard, but I'm going to love you anyway. Yeah. I'm going to be realistic and he didn't have to, but he made them look at my, he tells us, look at your own life yeah. and be grateful for the grace that you've received, that you've not been stoned for your mistakes. And even to the point of standing up for and protect, I'm going to protect you. I don't agree with the lifestyle you're living and the way you're doing it and the sin in your life, but I'm even going to still protect you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be hateful to you. I'm even going to take it a step further. And he always did that. You know, don't just um, love your friends, love your enemies, right? Yeah. Um, and, but I'm not going to go to the point of changing my values and saying that your lifestyle is okay. Go and right. sin no more. Now, we don't have the power... I guess that we can encourage him to sin no more or whatever. Uh, his authority is different than mine. But what I can do is I can show you love regardless of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I can show you compassion. I will even stand up for you if someone's trying to deny you or harm you or hurt you because of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What I will not do is be proud of you for it and and tell you that it's not now okay. Okay? Right. That that's that's not what we're called to do. So what we talked about um, was, um, you know, and Jesus uses that story and it hit me because of what I saw when I went to Starbucks. Right. Mm -hmm. Is um, we I want to make sure our kids know that there's a difference in loving and accepting someone without having to promote them. You know, yeah. I can. Uh, but then um, also, even in their competition, it just has to do with values. You know, you're going to want to go to bed because you've got a swim meet tomorrow and your friend who doesn't swim is going to value you staying up and playing video games and try to get you to participate <laughs> right. in that. Yes. And you've got to be willing to say, no, no. I got something right? to do. I got sure. priorities. Well, and and we'll end on, end on this. So with that conversation, so my wife and I have a, a young man that we adopted. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, he was a young man that came to church and he was in my small group and his perspective because he's just hurt mm -hmm. hurt and hurt people hurt people right and he was always looking for a fight he was always looking for somebody to say something to offend him he was always looking to offend somebody so that he would be justified in his conversation of well you're just going to reject me and this that, and the other and my wife and i have loved him and we love his husband and we just love them, but they know where we stand with it. But we still love Dougie and we still love Cody. But to show them love and to and to push through those things. And, and they struggle and they call me. He calls me all the time for advice. Mm -hmm. But he knows our opinion on it. And they've been very respectful of my home. Yeah. And it's a mutual respect thing. And but we've left him through it. 
We love him for who he is and what he is, but he knows that we don't approve. Absolutely. So you can have those conversations and have that relationship. My relationship with, and my wife's relationship with Dougie and my children, I mean, it's fine. But you have to be and have the courage and have the integrity to stand up and say, you know what, this is where we are, but we're going to love you anyways. And it took a lot for Dougie to, to be accepting of that. But we just loved him and we never offended. We never judged. We never, you know, we're going to love you through it. But it's a mutual respect thing. Yeah. So, I mean, in name of sin, and that's whether, you know, I base my life, my decisions, I try to base them off of um, the way I believe that Christ would want me to, mm-hmm. to live my life. Um, and that may not necessarily be when I hope that when other people look at it, they, they don't have to ask me if I'm a Christian. Um, but uh, there may be people that go, well, if you're a real Christian, you wouldn't do this, right? So I'm not gonna nec- I'm not gonna say that just because you don't hold the same standard that I do that I can't love you because that means there's a lot of people that wouldn't want to love me. Yeah, you know? so, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, there's I'm, I'm gonna love you anyway, um, but I'm just you know until I feel like God's uh, told me that I've been wrong about this whole deal. Uh, I'm and that's regardless of of what it is. It could be. You know, if I had a friend that was um, a womanizer or something like that, you know, yeah. it'd be the same thing. Same I, thing. I would love him, um, but uh, I wouldn't tell him that what what he was doing was okay. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, and, and there's a no matter how natural it was, oh, right? <laughs> well, so. and there's a so in the, in that uh, thirty three uh, Bible study, it talks about you know what is authentic manhood, you know. Uh, I didn't know this until just recently. We were reading over it yesterday. Or, uh, it's today, Friday? Yeah. So yesterday um, in Corinthians, it talks about the first Adam and the second Adam. So the first Adam being obviously Adam that God created. And then the second Adam is Jesus. You mm-hmm. know, where first Adam failed, Jesus came to succeed and to finish strong. And it was really amazing the conversations that we had to go alongside that. Because in this society, there aren't many men. It's probably an 80-20, you know, thing. Taking responsibility, standing up for what's right, being a man of your word. I mean, not, and and not just that, but also leading. You know, it's my responsibility as a husband and to be the spiritual head of my household and to be the head of my household and to not just be passive. We're just worried, told to be nice. Yeah. Everybody's worried to be nice, even in their competitiveness. If you only knew the amount of kids that we've like, we'll have to tell them to stand on the block and make them just yell. Like, I want you to give me a warrior yell before you can do anything. Next thing you have to do is this. And they, it's hard to get them to do it or or to, to do something aggressive. I've had to tell kids that you can be a gentleman outside the water, but I just I need you to be a warrior for 30 seconds. That's you know? it. But it's, I mean, to the point where they don't want to beat their friend because they know that they, they used, to, their friend used to be faster and now I've been beating him. And if I keep beating him, it's going to hurt his feelings and maybe our friendship. And that, so I'm going to be nice and let him beat me. I'm, and I've got to talk kids out of that stuff. Yeah, you know? don't do that. It's crazy that we've, the premium has been on not our best effort, not serving the talents God's given us. Um, it's just been uh, being nice. I just don't want to hurt do, your feelings. Do the best you can, but don't hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. Just be, you know? be the best, but not too good. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, I mean, just in life too. I mean, this, it's rampant. And that's why a lot of people won't, you know, talk about what we just did because yeah. they're afraid somebody will not think it's nice. Well, you know, I'm just trying, I'm, I'm just waiting <laughs> for somebody to like, you know, on the news or like try to, I'm not on Twitter, so I guess I can't get Twitter sphered, you know? Yeah. But, it's, uh, it, I, I have no problem being bold in my conversation. Yeah. I'm willing to always have those, those hard conversations to have the integrity to stand up for what I believe in. And most people are intimidated and scared. And they're also scared to be authentic. Cause that's another thing too, that men need to learn that it's okay. It's to be okay to be authentic and it's okay to be vulnerable mm-hmm. because I can tell you that the things that I've been told by people because I'm willing to be because I'm willing to have that conversation of me being vulnerable first 
and hey, I'm going to trust you with this because my wife knows the worst things about me mm -hmm. and she still loves me and she still, we still do life together and I can care less about anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so yeah, when it comes down to it, we just love people and, you know, and to be a man's man and to do the rugged thing. Like, I'll be honest, I don't know nothing about fishing. I go striper fishing, you know, like that trip that we take, but that's really easy. So I'm going with a buddy of mine like, Caleb, I need you to teach me how to fish <laughs> by myself so I can take my boys, you know? Yeah. And it's... Oh, I'm the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Or working on a car. No, see, I'm not no going to do that. You know why? Because people will ask me to work on their car. Yeah. No, I don't know I how don't, to do that. I don't. No. I understand I don't how my car works like I do my TV. <laughs> I, like, I, yeah. no, <laughs> I don't no, understand I don't how my do TV that. works either. So, JC, tell us real quick. We'll finish this up. Yep. Man, dude, just thank you for coming on and, and having this conversation. Thanks for having me, man. It, it always cracks me up because I watch people and, like, you're kind of, like, kind of getting in the groove. And then, like, now it's like, go, 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 you know? <laughs> so, it's funny to watch uh, people do that. So, thank you for being on. Uh, so, tell people how they can find you. Uh, if they want to help with scholarship. Maybe yeah. If they want to join the swim team. I mean. The whole, day, uh, whole thing, bisonswimming.com. So sim simple as that, bisonswimming.com. You can uh, send us an email through that. And um, whether it's about um, scholarshiping and helping some kids swim or um, getting your kid involved. Um, at both, we, we want more kids and um, we, we need the funds to make it happen. So Absolutely. Well, cool, man. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for just loving on some kids with some Jesus and, you know, being that being that leader for that next generation. And yeah, man. That Trying impact. to help them our platform. We told them nobody wants to be a part of the soft Christian team. So you got to go out there and win. And then that gives you the platform to do what you, what you need to do. So dude, uh, that's powerful right there. So um, they're, they're working hard at it. And we're really proud of those kids. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thanks man. Hey guys, make sure to follow up with uh, JC and uh, at bisonswimming.com. And I want one of those hats, by the way, if like you got one, <laughs> I need one of those. Uh, so guys, just thank you so much for having, just coming on and guys, thank you so much for listening and uh, spending the time. Cause I know it's a, uh, you know, it's almost an hour spending time here talking. So if you guys are encouraged, uh, JC is really easy to get a hold of and just uh, man, reach out to him, reach out to me. If y'all need anything, be good. Mm -hmm.